My Govanen folks. Today we have quite an interesting looking integral here. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of arctangent x over z divided by e to the 2 pi x minus 1 dx. And we'll start with solution development by evaluating a different looking integral, that is the integral function of z and x defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of xt over t times e to the negative zt dt. Now, how on earth is this thing related to the target integral? You'll find out in due course. The more important thing is that we are trying to evaluate it. And for that, I'll differentiate partially with respect to x. So that gives me partial i over partial x equal to, on switching up the operators, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of partial derivative with respect to x of sine of xt over t times e to the negative zt dt. Now, of course, the terms independent of x are going to be held constant, so we have integral 0 to infinity, e to the minus zt over t times the derivative of sine being cosine, so we have cosine xt, and because of the chain rule, we have this extra t factor here, which cancels out, and we're left with the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus zt times cosine xt dt, which can be solved quite easily using integration by parts or even expressing the cosine as the real part of a complex exponential. Or just for the sake of time efficiency, we're going to look up a table of Laplace transforms. Now, looking up a table gives us in the denominator of the expression, we will have x squared plus this thing over here being multiplied by t in the argument of the exponential function, which is going to be z squared. And of course, we have that same z term up top. So that is partial i, terribly sorry about that, partial i over partial, partial x. And now, of course, we plan to recover back the integral function by integrating with respect to x. Okay, cool. That seems pretty straightforward. So we have i of z and x equal to z times integral of dx over z squared plus x squared, which we recognize as the familiar arctangent integral. So we have z over z times, terribly sorry about that, arctangent x over z plus some constant, which is actually going to be a function purely of z, but of course that does not matter as I will demonstrate right now. Okay, cool. So what about the value of c? Well, recall that the integral function was defined in this manner, just ignoring the partial derivative operators there. So we notice that if we plug in x equal to zero, then i of z and 0, because we have sine 0, the, the integrand and, help, and hence the integral collapse to 0. Okay, cool. So x equal to 0 case gives us 0 equal to arctangent of 0, which again is 0 plus c, implying that c here is just 0, which is again quite convenient. So the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of xt over t times e to the negative zt dt does indeed equal arctangent of x over z. And notice that we have this exact term in the numerator of the integrand. So the plan here is to express this now as a double integral. So we have integral 0 to infinity, 1 over e to the 2 pi x minus 1, terribly sorry about that, times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of xt over t times e to the minus zt dt, and then we have that outer integration with respect to x, of course. So we'll take this thing inside the integration with respect to t operator, or operation, and we have integral, well, double integral now from 0 to infinity of e to the minus zt over e to the 2 pi x minus 1 times sine of xt over t dt dx. Now we can switch up the order of integration here, yielding again the double integral from 0 to infinity 
but now first with respect to x and then with respect to t, and that is useful because we can take a couple terms outside the integration with respect to x operator. So we have e to the minus zt over t times the integral now from 0 to infinity of sine of xt over e to the 2 pi x minus 1. Okay, cool. This looks fun so far. But now what? Well, we have this kind of term in the denominator that just screams geometric series. Unfortunately, this is not going to converge right now anyway, but we do have a trick for that. We could expand by 1. And by that, I mean multiplying upstairs and downstairs by e to the minus 2 pi x. So we have integral 0 to infinity e to the minus zt over t. Terribly sorry about that. Integral 0 to infinity e to the minus 2 pi x times sine of xt over 1 minus e to the two, uh, negative 2 pi x. We will have a k index over there. Ter terribly sorry for the spoilers. dx dt. Okay, cool. And now for the geometric series. So we can expand 1 over 1 minus e to the minus 2 pi x as the sum over k from 0 to infinity of e to the 2 pi kx, minus 2 pi kx, that is. And that means we can write i here as integral 0 to infinity. Terribly sorry about that. e to the minus zt over t, integral 0 to infinity of e to the minus 2 pi x sine xt sum over k from 0 to infinity e to the minus 2 pi kx dx dt. Wow, that is quite a lot of stuff. Indeed, it gets better. So we'll multiply this thing because we'll multiply this thing by e to the minus 2 pi kx because well, this term is independent of the index variable k. So we have integral 0 to infinity of e to the minus zt over t. Integral 0 to infinity sum over k from 0 to infinity of sine of xt is there. And we have a couple of exponential functions, both having negative 2 pi x. So we'll factor that out, leaving behind 1 plus k dx dt. Now, we're going to do a couple things here. Clearly, there are no problems regarding convergence. We can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators. And one more thing I'd like to do is replace k plus 1 with k. So I'm just shifting the index back by one unit. So I have i equal to integral 0 to infinity, e to the minus zt over t, times now the sum, terribly sorry about that, over k from 1 to infinity of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus 2 pi kx, again, times sine of xt dx, and I'm just going to close this off a bit to demonstrate that I am actually about to focus on this integral, because again, this is something that can be solved using integration by parts or by invoking Euler's formula or most conveniently using a table of Laplace transforms. So looking up a table, we find that this thing converges to, let's see, we got this t parameter and this thing is going to be divided by t squared as expected. And then we have, oh, the square of this thing. Oh, terribly sorry about that. So that's going to be 4 pi squared k squared. Okay, that looks pretty cool so far, I guess. Integral 0 to infinity. e to the minus zt, this guy just hanging in over there along with the t downstairs. And we have the sum over k from 1 to infinity of t over, well, t squared plus 4 pi squared k squared integration now with respect to t. So we're back to a single integral, but we still have an infinite series. And now the question is, how exactly do we evaluate this in this infinite series? We'll, we'll reference a previous result, one I derived quite a long while back, which is one of the coolest infinite series ever. That is the series expansion for the cotangent function. So cotangent 
of z can be expanded as 1 over z plus the sum over k from 1 to infinity. That's one thing we need. 2z over z squared minus k squared pi squared. So there are a couple things that are needed over here. First, we need a factor of 4 with the k squared, and then we need to do something about that negative sign downstairs, which is not a problem whatsoever. Why? Because hyperbolic trig functions exist. I mean, this is awesome. So if we go from z to iz, we have cotangent iz equal to 1 over iz plus, oh, what do we got here? Sum over k from 1 to infinity of 2iz over i squared z squared, which is, of course, negative z squared. We could factor out the negative sign, but I will do so in due time. But first, what exactly is cotangent of i times z? This thing equals cosine of iz over sine of iz. And we know how these things are related to their hyperbolic counterparts. We have cosh or hyperbolic cosine of z over i times hyperbolic sine or sinh of z. So this is hyperbolic cotangent of z over i. So this implies that hyperbolic cotangent z over i equals 1 over i z plus we know that 1 over i is basically negative i. And I do have a negative i over there if I just, you know, factor out the negative 1 from the denominator. So I can write this as 1 over i sum over k from 1 to infinity of 2z over z squared plus k squared pi squared. See, I, I told you we would get a positive side. I mean, you got to love hyperbolic trigonometry. And we can, of course, factor out the i, cancel them out. And then you have this beautiful series expansion for hyperbolic co uh, cotangent. So we have hyperbolic cotangent z equal to 1 over z plus sum over k from 1 to infinity of 2z over z squared plus k squared pi squared. Now the only thing missing is a 4 next to the k squared. There's a way to get that if we replace z here by z over 2. In that case, Rather, we do have t variables in the integrand, so we might as well just let z here equal t over 2. So we have hyperbolic cotangent of t over 2 equal to 2 over t plus sum over k from 1 to infinity. And this would be t over t squared terribly, sorry about that, t squared over 4 plus k squared pi squared. And of course, we can expand upstairs and downstairs by 4. Uh, terribly sorry for the atrocious looking 4s. I, I have gotten comments on my 4s here on the channel. I never really found anything wrong with my 4s, but it is a strange number to write. 4 and 8. Sorry for going off on a tangent over there. Uh, so, wait, what do we got now? Okay, okay, I remember. We have hyperbolic cotangent of t over 2 minus 2 over t equal to 4 times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of t over t squared plus 4k squared pi squared. And we can expand using a quarter as well, which is incredibly awesome because that means we have the result that we were looking for. Now let me just recall the integral. So it's all of this stuff. I'm just going to copy it down because there's a very high probability of me missing something. So we got all of this junk over here. And this thing equals integral 0 to infinity e to the minus zt over t times a quarter, of course. And we have hyperbolic cotangent of t over 2 minus 2 over t dt. And I'm just going to introduce one more little u substitution, or let's go back to the x variable. I'll introduce another x substitution just to get an integral that I've evaluated a while back. So we have to let t over 2 here equal x, which implies that dx here, uh, dt over here, is actually 2 dx. So we should get a cancellation with the factor of 4 over there, but unfortunately, the quarter persists. Why? Because we have e to the minus 2xt, uh, 2zx rather, 
over t. And t is, of course, 2x. So the 2x and the 2dx, yeah, that filters out quite nicely. Then we have hyperbolic cotangent of x minus 1 over x dx. And this here is the exact integral I evaluated a couple weeks back. All links are provided in the description box. And we have this absolutely stunning looking result over here. I mean, we got a quarter and the integral evaluates out to 2 log, terribly sorry about that, that looked awful, 2 log gamma z minus log 2 pi minus 2z log z plus 2z plus log z again. So it looks like we can expand by a quarter or I could just expand both sides by two. So I have twice the integral, one half now. So I'm basically expressing this as log z equal to something. And this is, well, I think it's pronounced Binet. Binet is the name of the mathematician. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I hope I'm not butchering his name. If I am, please correct me in the comment section. So uh, this is a formula for log gamma. It's an expansion that says log gamma z would be equal to, let's say we have twice the integral from zero to infinity of arc tangent x over z over e to the two pi x minus one. Wow, this is one of the most, one of, one of the coolest generalized results I have ever seen, man. I mean, this is awesome. Then we got a uh, half of, you know what? I'm just gonna write this term first. Z log Z minus a Z over there. Then we have mm -hmm, minus log two pi over Z times one half. So that's gonna be plus one half log two pi over Z, which looks absolutely incredible. A beautiful, monstrous looking result over here. This is, this is amazing stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.